I don't know everything there is to know about the Christian church and about Christian faith and about the preacher who preaches about the faith. Preachers are getting in a whole lot of mess these days. I don't know how to make sense out of it all. I don't know if I can take that faith thing too seriously. I, I don't know everything I need to know about faith. My answer this morning is, so what? You don't know everything there is to know about that medicine that the doctor prescribed you last week. You can't even pronounce it. But you take it anyway. You don't know everything there is to know about the plane. You don't even know the name of the pilot who flew the plane that took you 30,000 feet in the air and flew you across the country. Yet you sat down in that seat, fell asleep, and took off anyhow. You never met the chef who prepared the meal at the restaurant where you dined last night. You don't know if he washed his hands or not, but you ate that food anyhow. I'm trying to tell you life itself is an act of faith. And if I'm going to believe in anything or anybody, I might as well put my faith in God. How is it that we have to know everything before giving God anything? Can I tell you, I don't know everything there is to know about Jesus myself. I preach about him, but I don't know everything about Jesus. I've been in church all of my life. I've pastored two churches. I've got three degrees in religion, but I feel like I'm just getting started. I don't know everything about Jesus. I've never seen him, but one day I heard. That's all I have. At the end of the day, that's all I got. Can I, can I tell you that that's all the gospel is? I heard that he was in the vicinity. I heard that he was nearby. I heard that he's a friend who sticks close. Can I get a witness this morning? That he did, brother. I heard that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I heard that he's a mighty good redeemer. I heard that he's a liberator. I heard that he'll set you free. I heard that if you call on him, he will answer. And so one day I said, Jesus, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. One day I said, Jesus. And I found out that he's a mighty good friend. Oh, I, I wish I had a witness in church this morning. I, I found out. He's a mighty good friend. Resists the paralysis of analysis. Come next and see that if you are to spring forward, you have to recognize the gifts you do have. I admire this brother because he does not allow himself to get caught up in the paralysis of analysis. On the other hand, I'm convinced that he does engage in some analysis. In so doing, he recognizes the gifts and the resources and the opportunities that he does have. In business, there is something called a SWOT analysis. Uh, some of you have heard of it. Every successful enterprise, business, or nonprofit ought to do it. It's called a SWOT analysis. It's an acronym. You ought to analyze your strengths, 
your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And once you analyze your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats, you are then ready to move forward. You are then able to figure out what ought to be your next move. And I see somebody sitting in front of me this morning who's trying to figure out your next move. I, I tell you that under prayerful consideration, you ought to do a SWOT analysis. You ought to consider your strengths, your, weakness, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. That's what this brother did. Sitting there by the side of the road while life was passing him by, he decided to recognize that he has some weaknesses. Yes, he has some threats, but he also has some strips, and he has some opportunities. And the good thing about him is he decided to recognize the gifts that he does have. He decided to emphasize what he did have rather than be, be stopped by what he didn't have. He could have stayed stuck because he was blind. He could have had a pity party because he was blind. But what I like about the brother is he recognizes the gifts that he does have. He says, I may be blind, I may not be able to see, but I can shout. I'm blind, but it could be worse. I could be blind and mute. But thank God my eyes don't function, but there's nothing wrong with my mouth. I can't see Jesus, but because I have a mouth, if I lift my voice, if I raise my gift, if I blow my trumpet, if I do my thing, whatever it is, maybe I can't see him but he will see me. I, I'm trying to tell somebody. Raise whatever gift you have. Spring forth in your gift. Stop coveting somebody else's gift. Stop saying you don't have any gifts. Stop, stop being jealous over the gifts that somebody else has. Use what God gave you. If you can't preach, sing. If you can't sing, dance. If you can't dance, testify. If you can't talk, just wave your hand. But you ought to spring forward. If you can't give, serve. If you can't serve, give. But you ought to spring forward from right where you are. If you can't be a choir member, don't join the choir. Join the usher board. If you can't be a trustee, be a teacher. If you can't be a deacon, be a missionary. But spring forward. Take advantage of where you are. Use what you have right where you find yourself. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But you ought to move from point A to point B. You ought to spring forward. Recognize the gifts that you do have. Come next and see that if you ought to spring forward, you have to refuse to be dismissed. Resist the paralysis of analysis, recognize the gifts that you do have, and then refuse to be dismissed. Look at this brother. He begins to shout because that's what he has. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He uses what he's got. And then there were some folk, probably some church folk, some sanctimonious, savvy, sophisticated folk who said you're operating outside of protocol. Meanwhile, he's begging and they're driving their BMW, not the one that was left running this morning. And they say, shut up. Be still. The Bible says that many sternly ordered him to be quiet. There were many and they were mad. And can I tell you that whenever you decide to pursue your dream and step outside of the box that others have created for you, you will encounter resistance. 
And if you're not encountering any resistance in your life, all that means is that you're not going anywhere. But this brother has gone. He has unmitigated audacity. He has faith. He was outnumbered, outfinanced, and he was outside of the mainstream. But he refused to be dismissed. He said to himself, they're telling me to be quiet. They're telling me to be appropriate. They're telling me not to shake the tree. But why should I listen to them? They can't heal me anyhow. In the Southern New Revised Ebolic Translation, I hear the brother say, I ain't stun you. You can't help me anyhow. And the more they told him to be quiet, the louder he became. The more you tell me to be quiet, the louder I become. Their madness was his motivation. Their rejection deepened his determination. Their no solidified his yes. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. When the devil says no, God says yes. And God and one more is the majority. And so I don't care what the devil says, I feel a yes this morning in my spirit. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to my future. Yes to tomorrow. The devil says no. God says yes. Yes. 